What's up, everybody? It's E the Prophet here to do another video. This video is going to be called My Problem with Einstein's Theory of Relativity. So as you can tell by the title, this video is not going to be for everybody. Unless you consider yourself one of the truly intelligent, truly enlightened people, this is probably going to bore you. This video was uh, for geeks, nerds, people who like to look at the stars, people who are into the universe, the galaxies, all that kind of stuff. Stars, planets, you know, astrology, anything like that. This might be for you. But if not, you probably want to go ahead, you know, and do something else. But anyway, the reason why I, I felt the need to do this video is because, like I, like I said in my previous three videos, I think there's just a lot of scientific BS out there, a lot of BS theories, a lot of have big theories, a lot of theories that start off good but don't finish well. There's just a lot of stuff out there that doesn't make any sense. And that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to take apart these BS theories and put some truth to them because that's what I am. That's what the prophet does. But anyway, my main problem with uh, Einstein's theory of relativity is, number one, it's a quantum theory. Now, I didn't realize it was a quantum theory until I just happened to do a little research, read a few articles, and I came across it. I'm like, wait a minute, how is a quantum theory replacing what was once a physical theory, which was Newton's law of gravity? Now, to me, the law of gravity makes w way more sense than the theory of relativity. Let me explain to you why. First off, a quantum theory it's not something that can be proven or disproven. So I don't see how any of our theories will be quantum at this point because we can't really prove quantum theories. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you an example of what a quantum theory would be. Like, say if you have a mouse with a switch and when a mouse hits the switch, a dumbbell drops out of the ceiling and smashes them flat. In a quantum situation, both situations would exist. The situation where the mouse is pressed the switch and the dumbbell has killed them in a situation where he's never pressed the switch and he's still alive. Both those situations exist simultaneously in a quantum situation. So quantum is not really something, you know, uh, like I said, we can prove. So I don't understand. It's, it's almost like, you know, trying to rely on magic or even I hate to say it, uh, religion. You know, you can't prove these things and science should be about facts and what you can prove. You know what I'm saying? Things that come to a logical conclusion. That's what science is supposed to be. Science has turned into a, like a, a pseudo form of religion in a way, if you really think about it. Meaning a lot of these scientific facts, I mean, uh, theories are no more intelligent than these religious theories, to be honest. You know, and I, and I don't mean to offend anybody. You know, that's just, you know, I'm not a religious person. I don't believe in religion, you know, and it is what it is. But anyway, back to Einstein. Let me first explain to you what the theory of relativity is. The theory of relativity, simply put, means that a, a, a object of significant mass like the sun makes a curvature into space time. And then when it makes that curvature in space time, it allows the planets like the Earth and the other planets to follow that, that curvature that the, that the, mat, that the uh, stars created. Now, I've already said that you can't prove quantum anyway but the other problem i have is this whole space-time thing um just to let y'all know i i didn't even understand what space-time really was so i took the time to look it up so this is the definition of space-time space-time is the three dimensions of space combined with the dimension of time to create a four-dimension manifold called a continuum so as you can see how the hell do you even explain it? I mean, how can we even perceive space time? So how can we have a theory based on this? So basically we're saying that the planets are rotating around the sun based on this curvature in space time that we have no way to conceive or perceive. It, it makes no sense. Now I'm gonna tell you something else in terms of dimension of time. Maybe part of the problem is my, de my definition of time may be diff different from other people's definition of time. The way that I look at time, the way that I perceive time is seconds. One plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one. So you get to 60, and you got a minute, and you get to 60, you got an hour, you get a day, week, month, year, so forth. That's my definition of time. That's how I see time. 
I'm not sure how these people see time because I hear people say the time changes. Like if you go outside of our planet, outside of our, uh, you know, outside of our atmosphere and everything like time changes in space. And I don't understand how time would change in space because for me, time is a constant. Meaning if I'm on earth, one plus one plus one plus one is the same as if I'm on, if I'm on the moon. One plus one plus one plus one is still the same. If I'm on Jupiter, one plus one plus one plus, I don't understand where the, how that changes. So that's my perception of time. And that might be the issue here is that I have a different perception of time than these other people do. Because for me, time is constant and it never changes. So, you know, based on that alone, I don't understand how this could be the prevailing theory right now. Now, let's go back before Einstein, the guy before him was Newton. And Newton had a theory of gravity. Now, for me, gravity makes much more sense than the theory of relativity, because gravity is something that we can actually measure and perceive and see and see its effect on things. You know, so now I will say this. I don't think gravity explains everything. Like I know like there are uh, planets who orbit the Earth in a way that gravity might not fully explain it. But I want to say that um, one thing I think Newton may not may have missed or may not have taken into account was with gravity. And let me just explain to you a little just quickly what gravity means in terms of the law of gravity. It basically means that any object with mass is going to be attracted to each other. So objects of mass. So basically, when you have an object of huge mass is going to attract objects of smaller mass. But now, the only thing I think he may have missed with that is the fact that you have to take into account that these objects are spinning. I don't think it's just mass that attracts. I think it's the fact that they're spinning that causes gravity to become a factor. And, and I'm, the, the easiest way for me to explain that to you is think about when you go to the amusement park. And I forget the name of the ride or what it may be called, like uh, depending on the amusement park. But basically, you stand up against the wall. The floor drops down and the uh, room starts to spin and you're still attached to the wall. You don't fall off the wall when the room is spinning. That's gravity. The reason you don't fall off the wall is because the force of gravity is coming from that room spinning. So I think we have to take into account that these objects spin and that might have a little bit to do with uh, gravity. In fact, another way to think about it, like if you're on the moon, say if you, you go to the moon, you know, the uh, gravity is way less on the moon than it is on Earth. So you can jump real high, but you can't jump off the moon. You can't go to the edge of the moon and jump off in space. You can't do it. And the reason I think that is, is because the moon is spinning. And because it's spinning, the force of gravity, even if you jump, is still going to pull you back. No matter how high you can jump, the gravity eventually is going to pull you back because the moon is spinning. Now, if the moon wasn't spinning and the moon was stationary, then you probably could jump off in the space. But because the moon spins, you can't do it. And I think that's the one thing that he may not have taken into account. You know, it, it's not just that these objects have mass and attracted. They also, I think the fact that they're spinning causes a magnetic, causes like a magnetic attraction, possibly. And these are my theories. I, you know, I could be wrong as well. But to me, that makes a little more sense than what's, you know, kind of out there. Um, so... To me, Newton's theory makes more sense than, uh, than um, Einstein's theory. Now, some of y'all probably are thinking to yourself, man, how are you a dude in a polo shirt and a bandana all tatted up? Think you got the nerve to challenge Einstein on anything? Well, let me say this. I'm not, here, I'm not sitting here trying to act like I'm as smart as Einstein. I, in terms of mathematics, I, I'm nowhere near Einstein's level, and I'm not trying to give you the impression that I am. In terms of overall genius, I'm nowhere near Einstein's level. I, I don't know if anybody is, to be honest. I think he may be in a league of his own in terms of mathematics. But the one thing, just because you're a genius in one thing, don't make you a genius in everything. And I'm sure a lot of y'all know people. I know several people who are extremely intelligent in certain things, but are dumb as shit in other things. It's just the way it is. Everybody is normally not going to be a genius in every single thing. You know what I'm saying? So whereas he may be the, the, the most uh, 
acclaimed mathematical genius who has ever lived, I still don't think his theory is relevant to us in terms of what we need to, of how we're going, of how we perceive our solar system and the way the objects move around the sun, you know, the planets. So, um, you know, it just is what it is. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's my biggest problem with Einstein's theory of relativity. First off is a quantum theory. We can't prove it. You know, his, uh, is based off of space time, which once again, like, I don't even know how these people are measuring time. I don't know what their definition of perception of time is. Cause they say time, you know, is perceived by who's perceiving it. And I, I, I get that to a point, but to me, no matter how you look at it, one plus one plus one plus one plus one, plus one is what it is, no matter how you perceive it or no matter who perceives it, it is what it is, it's a constant. So that's my other problem with it. Like I said, you know, gravity makes much more sense because gravity is something we can explain and see. Now, like I said, I don't think the theory of gravity explains everything, but I think it does a much better job of explaining it to us in terms of in the physical world and physical reality of what we can see than the theory, than the theory of relativity does, which is not really in our physical reality. So, you know, um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about this, but that's just my problem. We need, you know, some of this stuff. I don't I just don't even understand how a quantum theory would allow, you know, what would have been allowed to be the prevailing theory for this long of a time. And like I said, I was always under the impression that uh, Einstein, man, for some reason, I thought that Einstein came up with the theory of, theory of gravity. I didn't even realize it was Newton. And Newton's theory was around for like 250 years before the theory of relativity. And there's been some other theories since then. But my whole thing is, though, we got to get away from this quantum stuff in terms of trying to explain why things are happening. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying quantum physics don't exist. I do believe they exist and they're real. But I just don't believe we should be trying to use that to explain certain things. Like, we shouldn't have to use quantum physics to explain why the planets revolve around the sun. I don't really think it's that complicated. You know, I, like I said, I think the sun is a massive object. Oh, one other thing I meant to mention, because I said that the planet's spinning has to do with gravity. That would also mean, and this is just my theory, but I also believe that would mean that the sun also has to be spinning to keep the planets revolving around it. Now, I could be wrong on that, but that is my theory right now. It could just be that the sun is so giant and has so much energy and God knows how much metal in it. There may just be a natural magnet that attracts certain things anyway. You know what I'm saying? That's something else we don't know. All of the metal in these planets and stars and stuff, they could be like, it could be a magnetic attraction as well. We just don't, and on a much grander scale than we probably could even imagine or perceive. So, um, I can't believe I forgot to mention that. So I would have to think that the sun is spinning and something else to think about. And I'm going to assume, and I could be wrong. And please, man, somebody, please leave a comment if I'm wrong. But I'm going to assume that the sun is not stationary spinning. I'm going to assume that the sun and all of the planets are moving constantly, as is everything else. So, you know, if I'm wrong on that, please, somebody let me know. But anyway, y'all, those are my theories. Like I said, I'm not trying to uh, act like I'm smarter than Einstein or I'm on his level in terms of mathematical genius. But where I am on a level above everybody else, including Einstein, is that I could see the big picture, meaning I could see the start and the conclusion of something. And a lot of people evidently can't seem to do that. They start off good and then fall apart midway through. The theory just falls apart, whether it has to do with where we come from while we're here, how the solar system exists, how the galaxy, the universe. It's like people just have these theories. Like, I'm going to tell you, my next video is going to be about how come there are no pictures real time of our solar system. We don't even know what the freaking solar system looks like real time. We, we have no way. We, we, I've never seen a real picture or any real video footage of the sun in real time. 
Now, we might not have the technology to capture real-time pictures yet. I don't know. That could be the problem. Because I have seen pictures on NASA's website of some of the planets, and they look like models. It, it, there's no way that the pictures could really look like that. I mean, the planets could really look like these pictures. There's no way. So maybe we just don't have the technology yet to see uh, how it would look. But I would really love to know how the solar system actually looks in the actual orbits of what the of what the planets look like going around the sun. Because one other thing I want to mention is, you know, a lot of what I see has all of the planets pretty much on the same plane going around the sun. And my problem with that is, if that's the case, being as though these planets are moving at different speeds, if they're all on the same plane, wouldn't they eventually crash into each other? Now, I saw a picture, you know what, I'm not even getting to that. I'll save that video uh, for the future, but um, that's what's coming. But anyway, y'all, if you were able to sit through this, I'm not even gonna make it long because I know this is some not very interesting stuff. It can be a little boring, but um, I'm a big fan of Cora. If any of y'all people uh, like to read Cora and watch this video, man, please ask some questions based on my video, you know, in Cora. In fact, I'm gonna do it myself uh, pretty soon because like I said, this is something, I'm not coming here really trying to give y'all answers or teach y'all anything. I'm just trying to make expand the conversation to make the conversation make more sense so we're able to figure this stuff out in a smarter way i guess but anyway please like the video uh please subscribe to the channel every video i'm going to do going forward more than likely is going to be um something to do with a scientific fact that i'm going to debunk or a scientific theory i should say that i'm going to debunk or i'm probably going to do some anime videos i'm gonna mix a couple of Got a couple anime videos I'm going to be doing, too. Between those two and uh, the science videos, that's what's coming. So, um, hey, if you got if you have any agreements or disagreements with what I said, please leave a comment. You know, ask a question. You know, I respond to everything. Uh, please share it if you want to. You know, I would like I would really love to get some good conversations going, you know, about science. I love science. I love learning. You know, I read all the time. That's what really qualifies me to come make these kind of videos because I read all the time. I study all the time. I study everything I can study. You know what I'm saying? I love to learn. I have a great ability to learn and I have a great ability of perception and discernment, which allows me to see through a lot of things that aren't true. It allows me to see through deceit kind of easily. You know what I'm saying? So I think I'm in a position to make videos that other people just aren't able to make and that's what i'm gonna keep doing but anyway y'all i love y'all thank you for watching the video everybody stay strong stay safe stay healthy peace